good luck now.
Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh to all our viewers and apologies for the late start. Um, so uh, with, let's waste uh, no more time. And if I could ask uh, Hashim Ahmed Kokra Sahib, if you could please come and recite a portion of the Quran, please. Alladina. Auzu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Alladhina amanu wa tatma innu kulubuhum wa tatma innu kulubuhum be the gorilla. Allah be the gorilla. He taught them in Translation I seek refuge with Allah from Satan the accursed. In the name of Allah, the gracious, the merciful. Those who believe and whose hearts find comfort in the remembrance of Allah. I, it is in the remembrance of Allah that hearts can find comfort. Al Rad, chapter 13, verse 29. Jazakallah. Jazakallah, Hashim Sahib. Very well uh, um, read. Allah bless you. Uh, and uh, let me move on to uh, uh, our guest today who will be presenting for, uh, for us on the topic of remembrance of Allah, uh, Ibrahim, Muhammad Ibrahim Ikhalaf Saab, uh, should I say, who I'm sure most of you already know, uh, is a national secretary for Tabligh, that's preaching uh, in the Ambia Muslim Association UK, a very humble soul and a very pious soul. So, without any further ado, uh, uh, Ibrahim Sahib, uh, if we start, I think what we should do is for half an hour, 35 minutes, and then we can go to questions and answers, but whatever you see fit. Assalamu alaikum, Ibrahim Sahib. <laughs> Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. 
واصبر نفسك مع الذين يدعون ربهم بالغداة والعشي يريدون وجهه ولا تعد عيناك عنهم ولا تعد عيناك عنهم تريد زينة الحياة الدنيا ولا تطع من أغفلنا قلبه عن ذكرنا واتبع هواه وكان أمره فرطا And keep thyselves attached to those who call on their Lord morning and evening, seeking his pleasure, and let not thy eyes pass beyond them, seeking the adornment of the life of this world, and obey not him whose heart we have made heedless of our remembrance, and who follows his evil inclinations, and his case exceeds all bounds. I read another verse. فخلف من بعدهم خلف أضاعوا الصلاة واتبعوا الشهوات فسوف يلقون غيا There came after them descendants who neglected prayer and followed evil desires so they will meet their destruction. My topic today, the Dars al-Quran, first of all my apology, there were some technolog technological problems, uh, problems with my computer. And this is why we have this delay. My, uh, my forgiveness for this. My pardon, sorry. Uh, my topic today is, in this Dars al-Quran, is the remembrance of Allah, or Dhikri Ilahi, or as we say, Zikri Ilahi. Before this, I want to give the, co uh, the commentary of the verses I recited, where Allah says, keep attached to those who call on their Lord. You know, this verse is from Surah Al-Kaf, Surah the Cave, Surah 18 of the Holy Quran. It says that at the, there will be a time, you see, at the time of the predominance and ascendancy of Christian nations. Then Allah says here in the, in the Holy Quran, there will, be, there will be a community of believers who are the true representatives of Islam. They will be followers of that Messiah and Mahdi who has been prophesied. He said, though that party will be completely drowned and engaged in the love of God and in worship and prayers, in the remembrance of Allah, while those who reject him, the other Muslims, they will have only the hope to have that future glory of Islam and the greatness of Islam. They will employ every means, material means, and they will start to look down on the followers of the promised Messiah who they deem as poor and politically unimportant followers. But in reality, Allah the Almighty says here, those who will have that salvation, who will get the victory, are those followers of the Mahdi who are day and night engaged in prayers. He says that the other Muslims will be neglectful of the remembrance of Allah prayer and divine worship and reflecting about his attributes. He said they will be drowned in the love of the world with such an overpowering passion. Then he says they will be lost in the pursuit of comfort, material comfort and luxury. Now, Allah continues and he says, in reality, these people will be so much engaged in material wealth that uh, they will be completely devoid of spirituality. And Allah says here, in reality, those people who forsake remembrance of Allah, this will lead to their destruction and failure. Even if we are Ahmadis, if we don't remember Allah, the Almighty, day and night, this will lead, result in pursuit of evil desires, and this will lead to lack of interest, apathy of true knowledge, and people will indulge in obscenities and idle, and, uh, and idle pursuits. Now, what is Zikri Ilahi? Zikri Ilahi is the creation of that relationship between Allah the Almighty, the Creator, and the human beings who are all the time in search of Allah the Almighty. That is why I want to explain how should we establish this relationship with Allah? How can it be nurtured to the remembrance of Allah the Almighty? This is a vital and most important task and objective of a human being in his life. 
But in this is such a vast subject, unfortunately, it cannot be covered just in 30 or 40 minutes. First of all, we have to know to, to how to establish that relationship with Allah, who is not only to be found in the books or in, uh, uh, or in the Holy Quran or in the other holy books. No, that Allah exists. And Masih Mu'ud says, how can you who have ears to hear? What is it that Allah requires of you? Only this that you should become his alone and set up no equal with him, neither on this earth nor in heaven. Our God is the one who is alive today as much as he ever was. Likewise, he speaks today as he did in the past. He hears as he used to hear. To think that Allah only listens but does not speak in our age, this belief, you know, this is a vain belief. Indeed, Allah both hears and he speaks. People are, una are able to communicate with him and his attributes are eternal and everlasting. He's the highest of the highest. You cannot say that there is anyone below him. He is in heaven, but we cannot say that he's on earth. He combi combines in himself all the perfect attributes. al wasiyat Ruhani Khazain. What I mentioned is zikri ilahi. Zikr means in Arabic language, remembrance. When we use this for Allah, that means in it are four aspects. That is number one, the obligatory prayers we, we perform every day, the five daily prayers. Then the voluntary prayers, and of course, after the uh, fard prayers, we call them fard or obligatory prayers, the sunnah according to the practice of the Holy Prophet, and then the voluntary prayers. Number two, it is the recitation of the Holy Quran. Daily reading of the Holy Quran, portion of it, a ruku' or some verses of the Holy Quran. Number three is for those people who reflect about the creation of Allah the Almighty and reflect about his attributes, how they are reflected in the system of Allah, in the nature, and do research, and etc., etc. And those who pray every day when they sit, when they lie down, and they think about Allah the Almighty before going to sleep, even literally one waking, waking up from the sleep before taking a meal, all these matters, this is number three. Number four is the most important, one of the most important aspects is the proclamation of the unity and greatness of Allah. That is in Jamati Ahmadiyya for our youngs especially, in order for yourself to be, you know, exposed to the environment outside in order, in order to sharpen your talents, your skills, in order to, uh, to strengthen your relationship with Allah the Almighty, it, in order to have that strong relationship and reflect Allah's attributes in your relationship to the people, it is very important here that you face the non-members of our community and start to tell them we live in happiness, the Messiah has come, the Mahdi has come, and I tell you, if you want peace, of mind, especially for example, in this lockdown, we are living in it. Some people are not that happy. People feel that if they do not have that serenity or tranquility they have, in this case, we can tell them, this is Allah the Almighty. This is his glory, the grandeur of Allah the Almighty. We invite you to him. Now I will continue. Allah says in the Holy Quran, and remembrance of Allah is indeed the greatest virtue. Ya ayyuhalladhina amanu la tulhikum amwalukum amwalukum wala awladukum andi awladukum andikrillah wa man yaf'al dhalika fa'ulaika humul khasirun. O you who believe, let not your wealth and your children divert you from the remembrance of Allah. Who does so, he belongs indeed to those who are losers. losers. Here Allah shows the importance of zikri ilah. It's not your only five daily prayers, especially in this month of Ramadan, the ninth month. We're like a pregnant woman, as I mentioned. So who this, the ninth month, she delivers the child. So in the ninth month, you will, you will become, if Allah will create a new creation. You will become like a new baby or you, you'll be transformed in such a way that you become a new pers person with a new personality, a new character and with high morals and spirituality. In reality, Allah, there are three kinds of people we have on this planet in relation to remembrance of Allah the Almighty.
One is the person who is completely indulged in this world and for completely forgets that he's accountable to Allah the Almighty. This is the person who in reality lives in darkness or we can say a person who lives, who sees a smoke, perceives a smoke from a distance, but neither the light of the fire which he sees nor the warmth of it benefits him. Then we have a second person, in reality, those people who just see the smoke, do not see the light, nor benefit, benefit them from the heat of it. These people, in reality, are those people with low moral qualities, envy people, miscellaneous, self-conceit, arrogance, pride, etc. When we struggle, then we go to second level. We are compared to that person who perceives a light of fire from distance in a dark and cold night, for example. Yes, because of the light, he's able, you know, to avoid snakes, thorns on his path, uh, rocks, uh, wild beasts, etc. But he is not saved from the coldness of that night. You see, although there is light, he, he is not, he doesn't have yet that experience or that level where he feels that heat and is protected from that coldness. And third category people are those people who in reality do not only benefit from the light, but benefit also from the fire. And they are in the circle of that heat or the warmth. This is a very clear distinction which we should do, we, uh, which is the journey of life and this is in reality the purpose of life. Abu Musa al-Ash'ari radiyallahu anhu, you know, there is a hadith which, say, which says about the Holy Prophet, مَثَلُ الَّذِي يَذْكُرُ رَبَّهُ وَالَّذِي لَا يَذْكُرُ مَثَلُ الْحَيِّ وَالْمَيِّتِ وَوَرَاهُ مُسْلِمْ فَقَالْ مَثَلُ الْبَيْتِ أَلَّذِي يُذْكَرُ اللَّهُ فِيهِ وَالْبَيْتِ أَلَّذِي لَا يُذْكَرُ اللَّهُ فِيهِ مَثَلُ الْحَيِّ وَالْمَيِّتِ The case of the one who remembers Allah and the case of uh, uh, the, uh, as against the one who does not remember Allah is like the living compared to the dead. The case of, of uh, a house in which Allah is remembered and the house in which Allah is not remembered is like the living compared to the dead. Just imagine as Ahmadi Muslims in this lockdown, if we are in our houses, we come, we quarrel with our wives and we do not give that due attention to our children, nor listen to what our Imam Khalifa al-Masih ayadahullah is telling us and you are telling us and we are not changing our ways. Then moreover, we are in the ninth month of Ramadan, which is an opportunity to, to transform ourselves as spiritual beings. Then I can say, you see, very un unfortunate for those people indeed here allah mentioned very clearly that the one who is not remembering allah will fall you know pray to his own carnal passions and will be drowned will be drowned in his own materialistic pursuits muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam mentioned in one hadith shall i tell you about the best action and the noble's deed and which is better than spending gold and silver which is Better than going for jihad, for the defensive wars, where you have to protect yourself and defend yourself. They said, oh, yeah, yeah, Rasulullah, tell us. And he said, it is the remembrance of Allah, the Almighty. He said, because it is the remembrance of Allah, which in reality, like istighfar, for example, which gives you strength in order to overpower any sin, in order to not to commit any sin and it protects you against any shortcoming. This is, there is an interesting hadith which says, for example, the Secretary Ta'aleem Nadim Rahman Sahib arranged these programs in which every day we have this Dardarus al-Quran. The Holy Prophet in connection to this says, how blessed are these events where people come together, whether in this case virtually or physically, and the angels come down and they, you see, and this, they pray for those people and Allah bless those people. To Allah belong some angels of high rank who are always on the move in search of people who assemble for the purpose of remembering Allah. When they come on an assembly, engage in the remembrance of Allah, the angels begin to join them, extending their wings over them, hovering one upon one, other, upon one another until the space between the earth and the heaven is filled with their presence. When the people go, the angels also go to the heavens and depart. Then Allah will ask them, where did you come from? 
They, they tell Allah, we come from servants of thine who are exalt, exalting, exalting thee, extolling thy great greatness, proclaiming your unity, O Allah, glorifying you and supplicating you. Then the Almighty inquires, what did they beg of me? The angels say they were begging thee. You see, uh, they, they, uh, they were begging thee for your paradise. He, Allah will say, did they see my paradise? What if they had seen my paradise? Allah exclaims. They also seek your protection, O Allah. From what did they seek my, your, my protection? Allah tells the angels. They say, from your fire, O Allah. They reply, then Allah will say, have, did they see my fire? Then the angels will say, they ask Allah for forgiveness. Allah reply, will say, I grant them forgiveness. I have bestowed on them all what they ask me for, beseech me of, and I have given them shelter, refuge, and protection that they sought of me. Then the angels will say, Oh Allah, there was one person passing by who was extremely sinful. He committed every sin, the worst sins, and he passed by and chose to sit with them for a while. Then Allah will say, Even that person I have forgiven him, because humul qawmu. They are so blessed that no one who happens to be in their company remains unblessed. This is so important for us as Ahmadis to come to small meetings, to big meetings, settings where Allah is remembered, where the rules of Quran are giving, where ta'lim classes are giving. In this case, the angels pray for you. The angels encourage you to do perform good deeds. And that is why we have this month of Ramadan. This month of Ramadan is so important. As Muhammad also mentioned, the first, the first week, the first 10 days, you have to pray so much. Do so much zikri ilahi, remembrance of Allah, so that you will attract Allah's mercy, Allah's mercy. And when you attract Allah's mercy, Allah will bestow on you that strength through istighfar. And you will do the real tawbah through which at the end of the month, you will attain salvation, which means you will get rid of all those sins and a new life will bestow, be bestowed on you because you invited death on you. And as you invite death and you wanted to meet death, those people who meet death, Allah will then bestow them life. And those people who run, to, run, run towards life in this world, Allah will bestow on them a spiritual death. This is the deep, the deep philosophy of Islam. Put a death on you and Allah will give you that life. Now, some people tell you because good deeds and remembrance of Allah. Some people think that disbelievers who do not believe in Allah the Almighty and perform, the, uh, perform good deeds, that these deeds will go in vain. We have to look out. Because this is not true at all. There is an interaction. The promised Messiah says in Malfuzat, you know, very interesting. He said, I was once reading about an idol, idol uh, worship, fire worshiper of 90 years age in Tadkiratul Awliya. It so happened that there was so much immense rain. I said it in my own words. Because the man was feeding the seeds after extended showers to birds on the roof of to the birds on the roof of his house a noble man who was a great believer approached him and said old man what you are doing he said it was raining so much incessantly for 6 7 days and i'm feeding the birds and the old the noble man said you are a disbeliever what reward can you attain from this the old man said indeed believe i surely will receive my reward the noble man says and when he went to hajj he saw the old man circuiting the Kaaba from a distance. The nobleman was shocked, thinking what is going on. He approached the old man and the old man told him, did I not tell you that feeding the birds, this reward will not go in vain? He mentioned clear, no one, you know, uh, no one should think, you see that this believer, even if performs good deeds, that he will go in waste as long as he has no prejudice and his heart is open for Allah the Almighty. What then about Muslims and then Ahmadi Muslims who are the followers of Masih Mu'ud alayhi salatu wasalam? We have to understand. Some people will tell you, we perform the namaz. We do five daily prayers. Why should we remember Allah the Almighty? Why do we need the zikri ilahi? Why should we reflect about the attributes? Because the zikr we already do in the namaz. This is something we have to think very deeply about. 
And this is not true at all. The Holy Quran clearly mentions there is zikri ilahi, salat is zikri ilahi, but besides salat or namaz, there should be zikri ilahi. I will read this something out, uh, out from, uh, from a uh, hadith Qudsi, a revelation to the Holy Prophet. Allah says, Ana inda dhanni abdi bi, wa ana ma'ahu idha, ma'ahu idha dhakarani. Fa'in dhakarani, في نفسي ذكرته في نفسي وإن ذكرني في ملأ في ملأ ذكرته في ملأ خير منه وإن تقرب إلي شبرا تقربت إليه ذراعا وإن تقرب إلي ذراعا تقربت إليه باعا وإن أتاني يمشي أتيته هرولا which means Allah says I'm in accordance with the thought with the thoughts with the way how my servant thinks about me I am with him when he remembers me. If he remembers me in his heart, I also remember him in my heart. If he remembers me in a group, I remember him in a better group. If he draws near to me, and this is very interesting, when he moves towards me by the span of an open hand, I move towards him by the length of an open arm. When he moves towards me by the length of an arm, I move towards him by the, by the span of two stretched arms. When he comes walking to me, I will run towards him in order to meet him. This is so important. That is why the Holy Prophet Muhammad said that through nawafil, when you do voluntary prayers, my servants, you in reality, are getting the pleasure and the nearness of Allah. The servant goes so close to me, Allah says, that he becomes the ears with which he hears, the eyes with which he sees, and Allah becomes the hands with which he holds, and Allah becomes the feet with which he walks. This hadith makes it very clear that beside namaz, we have to also, beside that, remember Allah the Almighty, voluntary, and then we have then absorb the attributes of Allah the Almighty and we become in reality here the friends of Allah on earth. Man is prone to laxity. Man is prone to indolence. He wishes to cope with a minimum hardship and discipline. That is why some people think in this way. In reality, those people who think namaz is enough, they sh although it's a combination of zikr, that is true, but it is not enough. That is why Allah says, and there is a hadith. He says, on the day of the, uh, resurrection, you know, Allah will ask you, you will be accountable for your five daily prayers. If they are complete, then you will succeed and prosper. If they not are not complete, then Allah will ask, check the, the other prayers, the voluntary prayers, in this case, of course, uh, voluntary prayers of my servant. If so, then complete his obligatory prayers with them. This is what Allah means. All forms of zikr are in reality meant to praise Allah the Almighty. They are there to glorify his name. Sometimes, you know, our young people in Jamaati Ahmadiyya, unfortunately, we don't have. In our Jamaat, outside Jamaat, they are so much inclined to Buddhism. You know, or in Islam, they are inclined to Sufism. But in reality, the Sufism is understood you see, by the people in the past, is different than our days. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was not a Sufi. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi was a Muslim. A Muslim is the one who does, is, is not sufficing himself only with the shell, but also the core. The body consists of soul. The soul cannot survive without the body. In this case, it's true that, for example, the Prophet Messiah alayhi salatu wasalam, criticized, for example, the Sufis. The reason for this, they stayed in their house when most Muhammad has been attacked and they stayed in, in their homes and started to zikri ilahi and, and cry. But Masih Mawad said, now you, it is time to get out and to spread the message of Islam and bring Allah near people, nearer to Allah, so that they, the vacuum in their hearts will be filled with happiness, serenity, peace. Otherwise, this is hypocrisy. Remember also, Islam does not mean like the Sufis were doing for zikri ilahi, hopping around and dancing and telling Allah, 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 and thinking that this is Sufism, that this is Islam. This is innovation. And the Holy Prophet وسلم, tells very clearly, there are some people who dance, etc., and they think through dancing, saying, Allah, this is Islam. 
Every innovation takes one away from the right path. And all of this leads to fire. That is why such zikr does not lead these people closer to Allah, the Holy Prophet said. Instead, it will move you away from Allah, the Almighty. Now, what is zikr? The condition of those people who do zikr. Allah says, إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الَّذِينَ إِذَا ذُكِّرُوا اللَّهُ وَجِلَتْ قُلُوبُهُمْ تَقْشَعِرُ مِنْهُمْ جُلُودُ الَّذِينَ يَخْشَوْنَ رَبَّهُمْ ثُمَّ تَلِينُ جُلُودُهُمْ وَقُلُوبُهُمْ إِلَى ذِكْرِ اللَّهِ إِذَا تُتْلَى عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتُ الرَّحْمَنِ خَرُّوا سُجَّدًا وَبُكِيًّا which says true believers are those people when they read and remember Allah, these people are filled with the fear of Allah because they are reminded of the status and the glory of God of Almighty. You will see their skin unless you if you don't see that you cry and your skin start to creep, your hair rise on your body due to the fear of Allah. The heart becomes so soft and the body and tender and kind that they naturally prostrate to Allah the Almighty and start to worship him. And they continuously cry and weep in front of Allah the Almighty. And that is why, that is why Allah said, that is why Ramadan has also been created in order to have that strength in you, to create that strength, that power in you and to become a new spiritual being who remembers Allah day and night. That is, but never give up. This is something else. Islam is based on hope and fear. Fear of Allah the Almighty in the positive sense, of course, like a child who does who wants only to be to perform good deeds because he fears that his father or mother will not love him. In the same sense, he should have hope. The Allah says, لا من روح الله إنه لا من روح الله إلا القوم الكافرون. Despair not of the mercy of Allah, for no one is desperate of Allah's mercy except the unbelieving people. When you do the zikri ilahi, you pray a lot to Allah the Almighty. You purify, your heart will be purified through dhikri ilahi and through fasting, your heart will be illuminated. Then Allah tells you, there is, when I remove this deeds from you, a vacuum is still there. And that vacuum will be filled with, with good deeds. Allah said, إِلَّا مَنْ تَابَ وَآمَنَ وَعَمِلَ الصَّالِحًا فَأُولَٰئِكَ يُبَدِّلُ اللَّهُ سَيِّئَاتِهِمْ حَسَنَاتٍ Which means, for those who repent, believe and good do deeds. For them, I will change their evil deeds into good deeds. This is what Allah says. Or oh, there is a hadith, Qudsi, a revelation to the Holy Prophet in hadith. يَا عِبَادِي إِنَّكُمْ تُخْتِئُونَ بِاللَّيْلِ وَالنَّهَارِ وَأَنَا أَغْفِرُ الذُّنُوبَ جَمِيعًا فَاسْتَغْفِرُونِ أَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ O oh, my servants, you make mistakes day and night. And I forgive all the sins, O oh, my servant. Ask my forgiveness. And indeed, I shall forgive all your sins. And as I mentioned also, Remember the what are the what is remembrance of Allah? One is the prescribed prayers. I think this is very important. Allah says, "Innani an Allah la ilaha illa ana fa'buduni wa aqimi salat li dhikri." Verily, I am Allah. There is no god besides me. So worship me alone and observe prayer for my remembrance. Then Allah says, the second remembrance is kind of remembrance, it's recitation of the Quran. We are the ones who sent down this exhortation and we will surely protect it. Quran has not been called Inna Nahnu Nazalna Al Quran only. It says Nazalna Dhikr because through the Holy Quran, it's in itself, you remember Allah. Quran in itself is Zikr in itself. Then Allah says, the attributes of Allah. As I mentioned, some people say there is no need for it because we do the namaz and remember Allah and his attributes. Allah says in the Quran, By they are men. They are normal people like others. They eat and drink, but they are never diverted from the from the reality because of business or traffic. They always remember of Allah and perform namaz. Allah says, "Dikri wa iqam salah," which means true iqam salah. Salat is zikri lahi, 
but beside that you have to engage yourself in zikri ilahi then the fourth thing allah says going proclaiming the unity to the other people you know the attributes of allah the greatness of allah ya ayyuhal mudathir qum fandir wa rabbaka fakabbir wa thiyabaka fatahhir wa rujsu fahjur wa la tamnun tastakthir wa li rabbika fasbir o you that has wrapped thyself with a mantle arise and warn and magnify your lord and thy heart do purify it and uncleanliness do thou shun bestow not favor seeking to get more in return and for the sake of allah when you warn and preach then still endure patiently this is what allah says about about uh, about the zikri ilahi what is zikri ilahi takbir tahmid and tasbih three things the basic things for example when you slaughter an animal you are obliged to say takbir allahu akbar loudly then before you eat you say bismillah or bismillah wa ala barakatillah anything when after completion of everything you say alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen when someone dies of your sad or sorrow news you say inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un when you have to perform a big task you say oh allah i do not have the ability to perform good deeds nor do i have the ability to resist from evil except through your power and might and the strength you bestow on me O oh allah la hawla wa la quwwata illa billahi al-ali al-azim then allah goes deeper then allah says also in the quran in the hadith through uh, in the quran la ilaha illallah the summary of the quran is la ilaha illallah nothing whenever you divert your attention from allah the almighty anything which diverts your attention from allah the almighty is association with allah the almighty is a sin then there is another dua which is very important which says qala nabi sallallahu nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam kalimatan كلمتان حبيبتان الى الرحمن خفيفتان على اللسان ثقلتان في الميزان سبحان الله وبحمده سبحان الله العظيم the two expressions which are so dear to Allah the almighty they seem to be very light on our tongue but they are so weighty in substance and that is indeed exalted is Allah with all his glory exalted is Allah with all his majesty subhanallah wa bihamdihi subhanallah al-azim this is so important that when masih mu'ud alayhi salatu wasalam wanted to wake up for tahajjud once but before or because of his weakness at that time and illness he could not stand up he received the revelation from Allah the almighty that nonetheless you will achieve great merit by saying subhanallah wa bihamdihi subhanallah al-azim now there are what are the benefits of zikr i think because of uh, also of uh, timing i will i hope in just five ten minutes benefits of zikr when you do the zikri ilahi for example one of the greatest forms of zikri ilahi is of course i will uh, i will tell you that is the tahajjud or getting up in the night allah says in the holy quran inna nashi'at al-layli hiya ashaddu wat'an wa aqwa muqila those people the last part of the night when allah descends as he says me metaphorically that means he will be so close to you where he says word is my servant who is worshiping me in tahajjud the voluntary prayers so that i will give him what he wants and i will respond to his prayers and allah muhammad sallallahu uh, allah says the almighty here in reality tahajjud is to get high spiritual high uh, very uh, lofty spiritual heights it says in reality through tahajjud you will uh, subdue that those carnal passions in yourself especially the young sanctanian pray tahajjud make it a habit if not every day then once a week even two rakat then start four six eight and try it every day and every day until you know three days four days until it becomes an a habit for you where allah the almighty says in reality you subdue your ego with all your then allah makes it more he said it creates generates that zeal and passionate strength that Come, that is why it says, في ليلة القدر تتنزل الملائكة والروح. 
a ruh here in reality means that passion is created in the human being that may enables him to perform such hard work and not only that and for those people who your the way of how you speak the words you talk following the middle way will have that effect on people and through you people will accept Allah the Almighty. That is why Allah says, Ya yuhal mudathir, oh you have wrapped up and sleep, oh Muhammad. Now get up. Now you pray tahajjud, you pray day and night until your feet on your feet, his feet became so swollen. And he said, Should I not should I not praise Allah for all the bounty he has given to me and then go out and then spread the message to Allah. In that reality, that is the whole purpose of Masih Mu'ud alayhi salatu wasalam. He was a Muslim among Muslims and he, he, he was raised to the highest level that Allah told him, now you, you, you uh, reach the highest levels. I make you a prophet. Now you go down. That is in reality the Nuzul al-Masih, that Jesus will descend. Now you go down and you, and, uh, and uh, reform mankind and this is this is one of the most powerful things and that is in reality tahajjud now zikr if zikr is the great virtue which we can we have then of course we have to conclude that if that is the greatest uh, virtue then it should also have the grace reward allah says in the holy quran وعد الله المؤمنين والمؤمنات جنات تجري من تحتها الأنهار خالدين فيها ومساكن طيبة في جنات عدن وردوان من الله أكبر ذلك هو الفوز العظيم الله promised to the believers whether man or woman he will give them gardens beneath which rivers flow wherein they will abide and delightful dwelling places in gardens of eternity. Then Allah says suddenly, and the pleasure of Allah, which is the greatest of all, that is the supreme triumph vict victory. That means there are two paradise you can say, although it is one. One is for the people who believe they will get gardens and they will they will they will live spiritually in tranquility peace in this world and the hereafter but for those people beside namaz and the obligatory matters and they remember allah the almighty day and night these people will have one reward and allah says al akbar is rizwan min allahi akbar which means the pleasure and the love of allah that is the grace reward they are going to get. This is what Allah the Almighty says. Then Allah says, Those who believe and whose hearts find comfort in the remembrance of Allah. Allah says, indeed, in the remembrance of Allah, you will have that serenity and you have that peace. This is what Allah the Almighty says. And have other benefit. Four benefit. I want to just move for three, four benefits. Allah says, Allah says, He remember me and I will remember you. Be thankful for to me and do not be ungrateful to me. And la in shakartum la azidanakum. And if you are grateful to me, and I will give you more. Even then Allah continues, he says, Recite what has been revealed to you, O Muhammad. Observe the namaz, the pray, but remember the prayers surely strings one from indecency and manifest evil. But then Allah says, that is salah. But the dhikrullah is indeed the greatest virtue. Through that, you will get the love of Allah. And Allah is all aware of what you are doing. Another thing, Allah mentions Quran. When Muhammad Sallallahu went for the battles. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu idha laqeetum fi'atan fathgutu wa dhkurullaha kathiran la'allakum tuflihun. 
all you who believe, when you encounter an army, remain firm and remember Allah much that you may prosper. Remember, Satan does not only run in your blood. Like angels, there is an invisible being who tries to put us in such a trial and Allah created him as a fitna for us in, in order to elevate us and raise us in status. Allah says, do not give up. Bethbutu, have always that strength and encounter him and do not be like those lazy or a coward who runs away and submits himself completely to his carnal passions and his egoism. Then Allah says, تفلحون, a, a person who remembers Allah, remember Allah says, in reality, those who remember Allah, they are the ones who will always be victorious. And then one or two points I want to mention on the day of judgment. There are seven people Allah says, I will grant them shadow under my shadow. And one of those people, are one of them, very interesting, because I want to speak to the youth. It is one of them is who remember the who remember Allah the Almighty. But another thing is Allah, when two friends are together and speak about the religion of Allah the Almighty and remind each other. Another thing Allah says, when a young man, a woman comes to him, you know, a woman is completely who submitted herself to carnal passions and tells and wants a relationship with him, illegal relation. And then he says, I fear Allah the Almighty. These are three people I already mentioned who are on the day of judgment under the shadow of Allah. And Muhammad also mentioned seven out of them. Then you remember when you say, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Before saying this, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, because this is also important in namaz, I want to say, when you pray to Allah the Almighty, you should be like a beggar and not just, you know, remember Allah is Allah and we are the servants. And do not make it vice versa that Allah billah, is the servant and we are the masters, that you just go to pray very fast and in hurry and say, Allah give me, Allah give me. This is not the way. It should be with attention. And Allah the Almighty says in the Holy Quran, in the Quran, if you read it, this is how we should pray. First, admit, and you, you should acknowledge the authority and power of Allah the Almighty. Then confess your weaknesses. You reflect who you are. What the mistakes you, you, you make, for example, in the night, think about yourself. Do I have any grudge to someone? Do I hate someone? Do I have any rancor towards someone? Remove that from your heart. Then when you have the second point, confess your mistake, then pray to Allah. That is why Quran starts, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, Maliki Yawm al Oh Allah, you are really worth of to be praised because everything is from you. You are the fountain and all of all perfect attributes. Then you say, Because of this Allah, you are the one who deserve to be worshipped. But in order to be worshipped, oh Allah, I am weak. Please give me that help and that power and that strength as I cannot overcome that Satan and that Satan in myself. And when you do that, Allah will out of his mercy, he will lead you along the right path when he leads you along the right path, then you will be the one who will inherit the blessings of prophets and the blessings of the truthful people in the past. That is why Allah says also in the Holy Quran, this is very, very important. Uh, Zikri uh, ilahi, when you finish your namaz, for example, you say, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. What do you say? You say, oh Allah, I came back. You say, people, I came back from Allah. I was remembering Allah. I was in his presence and I received from Allah that tranquility and peace. Now I want you to taste from the paradise, the fruits I have tasted in my salah. And please, all you people, the right and the left, we can say the whole planet, if you take it, take it in the territorial way. And then you say, this is the message from Allah. Just imagine if you go to Allah the Almighty himself and you go to the people and you say, I met Allah, I communicated and have peace of mind. In reality, you didn't come from Allah. You were never there in reality. That stagfirullah will be counted by Allah the Almighty himself. May Allah protect us.
as liars and this is something very dangerous now when you come, when you do the zikri ilahi remember one thing also which is <coughs> very important uh, very important J before i think nadimo rahman i think there were question and answer sessions sorry forgive me for this yes there is and we've got about 10 questions nadimo lined rahman. up for you Sahib? The question answer session <laughs> yes there is i don't hear you yes Sorry. whenever you are ready are you ready okay uh we are live uh i think ibrahim Saab can't hear us but yes uh, we have about 10 questions for you ibrahim Saab, and we are ready for that if you are I don't think Ibrahim Saab can I try to join. hear us. I don't know. I tried to join through the mobile. Maybe that's better. Sorry for this. Okay. Can you hear me, Ibrahim Saab? No, you can't. So uh, we shall uh, uh, move on to the questions as soon oh, as... Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Yes, I will join through this better. Okay. We will, uh, or dear audience, extend uh, everything by 10 minutes if Ibrahim Saf permits. Uh, can you hear me, Ibrahim Saf? Can you hear me? You can extend it more, uh, Nadim Rahman Saf, more if you okay. want. <laughs> so we'll start off with the questions. Uh, yeah. You Ibrahim can extend Saab. it more, no problem. Jazakallah. <laughs> so, uh, Ibrahim Saab, we've got quite a few questions. We'll try to combine them. Um, but I'll start off with Raheel Anwar, who asks, can Allah communicate with ordinary people through dreams? I'll start off with Raheel Anwar, who asks, can Allah communicate with ordinary people through dreams? Yeah, Allah, you see, uh, what was the second part, through dreams? Yes, can Allah communicate with ordinary people? Just one. Dreams? Sorry, one minute. Yes. Sorry, there's can some techni technical. No thing. problem. Can uh, Allah you said dreams? Second thing? Yes. Sorry, I missed that. Can Sorry. Allah communicate with ordinary people through dreams? Can Allah uh, you see, Allah the Almighty does not only communicate with people through dreams. Allah communicates through different ways. I hear my voice back. One minute. Do you hear me? Sorry. One minute. I hear my voice back. I don't know why. For... One minute. Wakar, do you, do you want to check the, okay can you hear me now yes we can we can hear you perfectly but i cannot hear you sorry yeah your volume i, I think, think there's something wrong with my not a problem if we, if we if okay uh, let me uh, uh, don't worry if, if, we put the the mobile, if we put the questions if, on the uh, screen I, I, I put another mobile here beside me. Sorry for this uh, technical problem here. Uh, no problem. As I mentioned, Allah communicates with people without, uh, not only through dreams. There are different ways to communicate with people. Allah can communicate to them directly through kashf. You see, which me, kashf is, is, uh, is, is much more stronger than dreams, which means that she, Allah can communicate with you because Allah can reach us easily, of course, but for us, it's not that easy to reach him. And Allah put a system which we call cash, which is sometimes so powerful that prophets and Masih Mu'ud made it very clear that is sometimes more powerful than this three-dimensional di world. When you talk to Allah, it seems even more powerful than the physical world. Shortly, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا رَبُّنَ الله those who say Allah is our Lord and they stay stead, remain steadfast, these are the people on whom the angels descend in this world. Indeed, Allah speaks not only to prophets, Allah speaks also to the ordinary people. This is a fact, but of course, the difference is 
لا يظهر على غيبه أحد أحدا إلا من ارتدى من الرسول which means Allah will never give in quantity and quality such an abundance of the knowledge of unseen you know thousands of except of course the one who has been commissioned and sent by him in order to reform people nonetheless ordinary people are able as Allah wishes that Allah can communicate to them through maybe when they pray Allah will answer their prayers that's also communication some people through their dreams some people through kashf there are different ways how Allah and give it to our duty is to pray to Allah and it's up to Allah how to deal with us know the question Ibrahim Saab can you hear me Ibrahim Saab Yes, yes, yes. Can you hear me, yes. Ibrahim Saab? I can hear you. Okay, Zakala. Um, I'm just going to go, yes, um, I'm going to go to a question that is uh, quite a yes. personal question, if you don't mind yes. answering. Uh, there have been many prayers that have been offered for you in light of your recent um, miraculous recovery, mashallah. Um, there's a question from yeah. Tariq Ahmed who asks, um, can you please uh, talk about how remembrance of Allah helped you during your recent illness? How the, sorry, how the, the remembrance of Allah, the Almighty. Yeah. Uh, if you give me a little bit of time on this, you see by, uh, by Allah's grace, the Almighty, I, you know, me, you see, and my family, I have been brought up in a very spiritual family, alhamdulillah, before Ahmadiyyat. And of course, in Ahmadiyyat, through Khilafat, that has been, you know, all those, this, uh, all these, uh, we can say qualities in us which Allah bestowed on us have been sharp, sharpened. Yes, all my life, I remember, I always did zikri ilahi. Even when I was my age, five, six years, I was thinking deeply about this. And this strange thing, and this is what I want to say to the youth especially, it is time for me, the, that age between, like, let's say, 10 years and 20 years, teenager's life, you see that such an important aspect of your life where you should start to remember Allah the Almighty. And when I was in the hospital, because of this, I always feel in whole, whole my life, I am not exaggerating. And I'm telling literally as a humble, ordinary, simple person, I feel always that Allah respond to our prayers. When I was in the hospital, I prayed a lot. But because this time, you know, the illness, as Allah says in Quran, Zulzilu, I have been shaken, never in, you know, I, of course, believers sometimes Allah gives them a trial of giving them illnesses in order to purify, purify them, remove their sins and to give them more, you know, higher, you know, uh, spiritual, you know, uh, level. Yes, this time, I think I have been, I have been infected by this COVID-19 to such a level that uh, that had been shaken. And I think uh, I was prepared to a certain level. I think on a Friday that day, I was prepared, I remember. And everyone who takes will take it lightly. I can, yes, for some people, COVID, it didn't do anything to them. For me, it, it caused almost the death. On a Friday, I remember, then I, I was ready. And uh, I called my wife or sent a message to my wife. Then uh, I was prepared to go to the other world. And I think it's very emotional for me at the moment. I was prepared, but I continue to pray to Allah the Almighty that I think I'm still at a young age to give me the opportunity to serve Khilafat. And I remember those moments. Uh, I mentioned this Khalifa al Masih doing intensive care and before and for those people who reject Khilafat you know wherever I close my eyes I could see the Khalifa in front of me a very strange and then some, somehow uh, when Khalifa al-Masih came to know and then Hazu mentioned uh, I only asked my wife for one thing ask Khalifa al-Masih to pray for me 
and especially and the believers of course and then khalifa al masih said uh, say to uh, say uh, nothing to worry inshallah uh, and uh, he will recover and subhanallah i can tell you now six weeks later seven weeks later if i tell anyone uh, that i'm completely recovered and i feel that my life after this compared to the life before COVID. Uh, increase a lot in many in uh, many uh, areas and i think yes allah responds to prayers of all believers and i believe strongly in this i myself i'm witness to my own prayers although i do not deserve to uh, that allah will respond to my prayers but allah out of his sheer mercy always respond to our prayers but in this case at corona it was the pure grace and prayers grace of Allah and praise of Khalifa al-Masih and last thing I want to say something which is very important our prayers are in reality responded to by Allah the Almighty because of Khilafat because of Khilafat his name is to Allah the Almighty uh, and he Khalifa tries to spread the light on earth and repel remove the darkness and Allah sent his angels and these angels come also to the hearts of the believers and because of this allah respond to their prayers in reality there is and i can tell to anyone here and i want i want to you know there is no islam who my life of studies i studied along in my life a, a religion i did different universities all my life i was engaged in this you i spoke about sufism i studied in depth there is no life without Khilafat. If you accept Masih Ma'ud and you say, Alayhi Sato, you say, I do not accept Khalifat al Masih, is all futile. It's equal to those who reject Masih Ma'ud. Rejecting Khilafat is rejecting Masih Ma'ud and is rejecting Muhammad. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Another question, please. We've got quite a few, but uh, due to time, um, I'm going to ask uh, uh, your humble self, so if we can wrap it up now, just a few announcements I need to make. And the first thing I would like to remind viewers tom that tomorrow we will have uh, Amir Safir Saab, the editor of Review of Religions, with cherished uh, mementos with Khalafat. And then, inshallah, on Saturday, we will have uh, Atamajib Rashid Sahib, on the topic of what can Amdi Muslims do for the cause of the Jamaat. Um, I would also like to remind members and viewers that uh, very soon at 8 p.m. Uh, we've got the big uh, iftar, virtual iftar going on and Amir Saab UK will be there. So please, if viewers go there, there is a uh, URL for um, uh, YouTube, please go there. That's going to be very big. And inshallah, you can see the mosque in a different direction as well, which Ibrahim Saab is also part of organizing. It just leaves me to say, Ibrahim Saab, uh, Jazakallah for coming, taking the time out of your busy schedule to be with us. And thank you, dear viewers, as well. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.